We're going to check out CP Sultry. This is a new map in the map pool for RGL. A lot of people have never seen this before, and they're going to have to learn it real quick. So I'm going to help people do that. I've played it a bit um, over the last couple seasons. It was an invite recently, so I've got some experience on it. Obviously, this is a new version, B8, so there's some changes, but I think I already know how they're going to mostly play out. First thing I want to do, guys, just go over a couple callouts that people should know. So we're going to have the lobby up in here. We got the dungeon down here. Usually we just call this the wall or the ledge window. This is alley. Call this elbow. Shutter. Then um, calling this balk. This was called frog because there's a sneaky little frog in here. And this was called cheese because there's a little mouse trap with some cheese on it. But for some reason it's in the shadow realm. Who knows? You come to mid. Uh, you know, you got your towers and all this stuff, but, uh, yeah, maybe you could call this big door now, choke, pretty straightforward, a few call outs, but you got your, your basic layout that should be familiar if you played really any modern map. Next thing we'll talk about rollouts. Usually people are going to roll out to the left. All right. If you're a demo man. Uh, you have a couple options. Assume you're buffed. You can come to this point and then you can go a couple different directions. Um, generally, you're going to see people rolling out towards cheese. Because you get in here, you get this nice big health pack. You come out here, you got pretty good vision on mid, right? So a lot of mids, uh, you're going to see teams coming through here. This is going to be uh, an angle where you're going to have really good vision of the enemy team. You're going to be spamming across a lot. A lot of spam. They recently reduced the size of this mid, so fights aren't as long range as they used to be. And there are, you know couple more aggressive options now but a lot of teams are going to come here and then they're going to they're going to see the other team on the other side and then the question is going to be now what what do we do now so a couple options that we can talk about high bombs are an option on this mid you have bombs there and off the tower the tower is especially good also off of this back wall but the thing you got to be aware of and careful about on this mid is the way that you can actually end up isolated quicker than you might think so, for example, if I come into mid through here and I go for my high bomb, right? I bomb off this and I land back here. I actually just isolated myself completely from my team. So that's where a lot of people are going to go wrong on this map is they're going to go for these high bombs and then their soldiers are just going to feed because they went way too far and they ended in a, in a corner where the rest of the team has no vision and no ability to follow up. So... If you are going to be bombing deep on this mid, I highly suggest that you be very careful about landing too far back there i think that counter jumping people that are isolated you know on these flanks or off the roofs or just in this general vicinity where the rest of your team can fight and follow up on it is usually going to be a good idea um another important thing on this mid is going to be for your medic your medic just doesn't want to end up in this corner if they do do that uh double bomb and you end up in this corner you are going to die so medics are going to want to be able to kite out through choke or just kite back into cheese if not just go forward hold w and take control of the point that's usually what's going to win you the mid once you control this point you're 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 doing well now that it's a little bit more elevated and it's a little bit closer um this is a really strong position to to control because you can just bottleneck them through here you know have height over them there and then you're good so getting point control is kind of the end goal here Rather than bombing deep and chasing them in these side, you know, hallways. Always remember, there's a health pack in here. So if you bomb some guy and you hit him for 100 right here, he gets a pack and boom, he's full and he's right back in. So that's something to just be cautious about. The same is true over here. These health packs are very accessible. This health pack, though, in particular, does create some options. Here, I want to show you guys something else. Soldier rollout. There is a fast rollout on this map, which is going to be, in my opinion, extremely relevant and extremely dangerous. So, your soldiers can roll out all the way through lobby. They come on up here. You get the pack if they need it. And then they can just jump right off this. And they get a beautiful ramp slide off that. So, you can use that jump. If you hit it really nice and fast, you can land on the demo roughly at the same time. You could also land back here and get this pack. So, that fast rollout does create some, um, you know, some play opportunities on this mid. And it is going to keep the demos in check somewhat. If you can hit that consistently. So definitely want to get familiar with that. It's very reminiscent of like a process fast rollout. 
And we all know how the roamers love that fast rollout. Other thing I want to mention on the mids, though, is besides just the uh, left side mid where you kind of just, you know, either stand here spamming and then just do high bombs and push the point, which is kind of the straightforward mid. Um, another thing you can do is rotate your combo over here and kind of push head on directly into them. This is a particularly strong angle for demo men, um, which I can demonstrate right here because it gives you a better sight lane onto that rooftop. That's where a lot of the scouts are gonna wanna play. It's on that rooftop on mid. And so if your demo, uh, you know, maybe he comes here and then he rotates the right or he just rolls out straight choke. If your demo is here and he's just blasting the scouts off this roof, that's really gonna help set up your soldiers to get in. So, that's a little tip for you guys there. Uh, I actually played against a demo that was so annoying where he came to mid and he just trapped this. And so, when I jumped on it as a scout, he just blew me up. So, demo men can control this roof pretty well, um, but you have a better shot of hitting it from this angle as a demo and just in general, closer range. So, potentially this, this like curve right here is actually going to favor you as a demo. Because you can just be spamming over these these little curves here without needing to actually commit up. So that can be pretty powerful as well. Um, so yeah, once you have mid, a big tip I'll give people is this sightline is more important to watch through cheese than watching frog. Reason being, if someone was going to flank you through here... They're just going to end up right on top of you, you know? They're going to be shooting you in the back immediately. And they're just going to be jumping, like, over your head, right? So this flank is much more dangerous to not be watching closely. Especially if you're just kind of hanging out here or, like, on this shed. Because they're going to be shooting in the back immediately. Um, whereas, if they come through Frog, not only can you see them crossing from here through this fence. But they're pretty far away and they're on low ground. So, say I was down two... I would rather have my team stacked more to control this lane than I would spreading my team thin and having them spot that. So that's just a, a tip that will save you from getting destroyed by the flank. All right. So pushing second, you got you got a lot of options here. It's three lanes, you know. Choke is very open and very, you know, straightforward to spam through and poke through. So, this is a good spot to be if you just want to get vision. Choke is great for that. You can peek all around. There's also a really good high bomb spot off of these walls. Um, and if you can spam them off of kind of this platform of the point, a lot of this, uh, you know, open space down here actually becomes somewhat accessible. And you can start trying to bait people to fight you or just, you know, take space and bully them out. So, choke is kind of good for that. Obviously, you got to be very careful of incoming high bombs because if a soldier is chilling like over here, he could just jump around this corner and kind of sink rocket you in the choke and you'd get blindsided by that. So you got to be careful about that. Choke is, I would say, pretty, uh, it's kind of like middle of the road in terms of risk and playmaking ability. Okay. But it's, it's a solid starting point just because of the vision. You can get a good idea of what their setup is. But an underrated route to pressure from is going to be in here in Cheese. Reason being, if anyone is in here, they're going to be very isolated from the rest of their team. Most teams are going to play on the point. So if you find a defender anywhere around here, that's a guy you want to pounce on and try and get that kill. And then this space becomes pretty nice to bust through because, again, most of the defenders are going to play on the point. So you're, you're looking for space as far away from the enemy team as possible, and that's what this offers you. So if they were going to challenge you here, like, they don't really have a good position to do that. If they want to stand here, you could just focus fire them down real quick, you know, chase them down, get that kill. If they want to stand right here, you know, it's a decent spot, but you can kind of quickly bully them off of this. And, you know, if they're just going to stand here in the open, same thing, you just focus fire them. And similar to Gully Wash, it creates this opportunity where... You could potentially bust someone behind into lobby and start pulling people uh, out of position to chase you or, you know, set up a flank from behind them when they're holding second. So that's one of the really nice uh, options over here. I would say that this one is relatively low risk because you're so far away from them. Obviously, 
you still have the same potential high bombs coming in, like around these corners. You are, are always going to have to be keeping track of the soldiers. But decent playmaking, decent kind of space creation over here. So finally, we'll talk about this third lane over on the left through Frog. This is a little bit of a death hallway. So you want to be really careful how you use this. And a lot of times it's going to end up being a dead end. So big tip I can give people, again, similar to how you're holding mid, I would say hard committing someone to just watching this and pushing this or like having both of your flankers push through here is very risky because it's very easy for them to just get straight up denied. There's so many, so much splash that can come in through here. There's not a lot of great, um, you know, movement options. This doorway is pretty narrow and you're going to be running like right into their whole team if you try to go through here. And not to mention, if you end up committing through here, they can just cut off your exit. So Frog is is a very high risk area. Um, and is it high reward? I mean, potentially, like you come through here, you're right in their face. So if you get in clean, you might have a very solid flank with a lot of damage being dealt. But yeah, so that's kind of how I look at this. It's like high risk, medium risk, low risk. And you kind of pick your poison. Obviously, you want to be pressuring all doors simultaneously uh, whenever setting up a push. For example, you know, maybe you have um, a soldier jumps through here, makes some space, jumps back while someone's, you know, going fast up through frog. You know, that could be a play you set up. Or you have a soldier who goes for like a super high bomb, you know, while you have someone else running in through, through cheese and just holding W. You know, you can set up plays from different angles. There's plenty of options for that. So, it is one reason I like uh, the way this map is developing. If you do manage to just pull off a dry push and force them off of height, you know, you can take height relatively quickly on these side areas. And, um, yeah, the goal really of pushing the second is to force them back off of the height. If they start retreating into alley, you've basically won because this is just such a supreme... Uh, height disadvantage and you really have no angles to like fight or hit the point at all here you're just completely sightlined out so that's a lot of what you're going to look for all right so now let's say you take second um usually you're just going to chill kind of on top of the point but if you're at a at disad i guess something to be aware of of this whole map is because there's so many open chokes like this um, Ubers can just come flying in, you know, you could just pop on a demo. He could single or double sticky jump even, and you could pop on a soldier and he can just fly through. Uh, it's kind of reminiscent of an old map called uh, propaganda in that regard, where there's a lot of high bomb options, a lot of very open doorways. And what that means is that if a high bomb can reach you, you are not safe. And so the challenge of this map is going to be, can you hold the chokes and pressure the chokes well enough while also not being caught if they just pop through so it's it's very difficult um that's why your medic on this map is usually going to want to play relatively safe towards exits because if a team popped at the back of alley they could literally cross this entire space with their uber it's it's possible so your meds positioning is going to have to be very careful and precise um same thing on mid if you're on like a disad if they just pop through on choke you are caught if you're standing here whereas on maybe like I don't know, another map like, uh, let's say Sunshine or something, like, you could kind of be at the shed as a medic, and you'd probably, you'd probably be able to get out. This is kind of like similar spacing, but because this choke is so open, uh, you're gonna, you're gonna be caught, and the, the run to the exit is so long. That's kind of the thing about it. You gotta think about how far you are from the exit at all times, and if you're here, you're caught, so medics are gonna be probably wanting to play a little bit safer a lot of the time on big uber disads and that's going to be applicable throughout the whole map now as far as holding second uh or fourth i guess you know you're usually pretty good if you're just here because from here you can spam just about everything this is a very solid position um we talk about like god spots this is a god spot meaning you have really good vision you can see all the way to right lobby and all the way to the end of left alley so this is a super strong position to get in as soon as possible, if you can, because you're going to see a lot of stuff incoming. It's similar on mid. Um, the god spot on mid is going to be, you know, kind of around here. 
Because if you're here, you can see them going through that fence or just crossing directly into frog. You can see them at choke and you can see them at, at cheese. So these spots are going to be uh, very important to emphasize. Notice how this one gives you so much more value than being over here, right? Over here, you can't see shit. Maybe you can see a little bit in there, but you're basically blind to two-thirds of the map. So these spots are going to be very important for people to just get in the habit of being in. If you're on second, you know, you kind of have the same thing right here behind this fence. You can see through that. You can see if them if they're crossing the left, you can see if they're choked. So similarly over here, this is kind of the god spot here. Um, lobby control is usually pretty reliable to get, I would say. Not a lot of people try to forward hold or fight in here. Um, and the pack is pretty easy to grab, so securing lobby is, is a good option. Where you're usually going to struggle a lot is alley. Like if you're peeking over here really aggressively, you're going to get blasted by spam. Because soldiers will be on the height, pipes are going to come over this easily, stickies, etc. Um, thankfully, sniper isn't too bad. If you're peeking on this left side, or if you're peeking um, dungeon as well, right side is where you're going to want to probably worry about the sniper the most, because there's a decent sight line over here. So, lobby though generally is pretty safe, unless you like wide swing on the right. So you can usually get your team to kind of collect themselves in lobby and just chill out. You're not going to see a lot of spam coming in here, or bombs coming in here, unless there's like some psychos that, you know want to feed into your whole team through here so once you're safe on second you get uber whatever taking lobby usually a good start and then from here you can you know set up your pressure into last there's um some decent spam angles to like destroy sentry guns usually uh the strongest one uh one of the strongest sentry spots on this map is like on the point but it's very like trivial to spam it down from dungeon if you just sync up your your soldiers so, the harder sentries are going to be in, like, corners and stuff, but I can talk about that later. Uh, sacks into last are not going to be, like, the cleanest. I'd say it's kind of difficult compared to, like, Sunshine, for example, because if you skip jump through here, you don't quite have the... just the force behind your skip. Um, but one thing I think you can look for is that a lot of people do play somewhat forward. So you may be able to kind of like bomb people off of these like these ledges and you might be able to get a pick or something there. Um, and you can kind of brawl a little bit like there is some space because of this wall. There's a little bit of like safe space here to kind of look for fights if you want to kind of sack in that style where you're looking for picks. It's going to be hard to sack to get a force on this map because the medic can very easily just play in the spawn like getting a force is very unlikely in my opinion so a lot of times you're going to want to look for picks when sacking um or just look for space that's how i see it but you never know some medics are going to be sloppy with their positioning you can probably get like some sick jump i'm sure people can come up with something i i don't know any like set jumps here at the moment but like yeah, like, cool. You, you do some weird-ass ramp slide and fling in. I'm sure if you space it properly, you could go into the skybox off of a jump like that and land basically wherever you want. So, maybe a lefty jump. Yeah, a lefty jump gets you in off that. So, there, there are some decent sacks off of that ramp. And then, you know, you could always come through dungeon and high bomb off this wall. Um, so, you got options for bombs. You've got to be creative. But I usually think get, getting the med here is probably not going to happen. Sniper's pretty strong. Um, into last. This angle, you know, goes both ways. If you can control this entire right lane, you're probably going to do pretty well. You have this shot onto people on the wall. You could even come into the window here and look for a hero shot. Dungeon, probably a pretty good, like, hard scope, slow peek. You know, see someone out in the open. Alley, same thing. Because people are going to want to stand on these perches. So, if you pull out a sniper, you're going to really limit their options for vision and spam. Because then what are they going to do? Just hide behind this wall? Kind of might play like Metalworks in that way. Like, you force them behind the wall and then maybe you have an easy sack after that. So, those are some ways to, like, break glass, I suppose. Um, 
if you're going to just be popping in. Dungeon is a popular option just because it's so uh, fast to get through this doorway unseen. And it's usually not going to be, you know, spammed super hard at the right timings. And you're, it's very versatile. You can jump from here and land on any side. And your medic and, you know, scout with the follow-up are going to be just immediately right there. So dungeon is probably the most popular um, uber into last off of big ad. It's very easy to land on either side. And then um, I think as of this version, landing, ending your uber on this height is very attractive. Um, but there's also, you know, viable height on this side as well. So really, you can end ubers on either side here. Um, I have seen people even, you know, ending their ubers kind of here because your medic then has a pretty good escape out through dungeon. Um, if the push isn't going well, you know, you might go down here. But uh, one thing to just be aware of on this last when pushing, this is one way glass. So they are going to be able to see your movements, you know, what side you're ending. And obviously they're, they're going to have to do their best to rotate and all that. Um, but yeah. If you uber through dungeon, call a side to collapse on. Usually you can sync that up pretty well. And it, it'll play very similar to other lasts that you've that you've seen. Um, another thing to be aware of on this last, the cap point is only within this caution tape. So I've seen some people try to like cap. Actually, I think this version might fix capping at the back here. You can actually cap it when hugging this, this back wall. So that's actually good for the attackers. Because before, if you were actually pressed up against this, I think you wouldn't cap. Just be aware, though, the caution tape is the cap zone. So if you're, like, up here and you think you're edging the cap, you're not. So just be aware of that. Um, and now I guess we can talk about, like, some of the most common sentry spots. Uh, I used to love putting the sentry over here. There used to be a crate here, but there's no longer a crate. So maybe people will put the sentry behind the barrels, you know. But otherwise, at the spawn, or probably behind this wall, I think this sentry is probably going to become a little more popular. And then during a stalemate, probably gonna see sentries like on the point you know you can even put it on this rock things like that so um oh yeah another little tip for pushing this last you can jump from the point like capture point itself onto this wall now they've lowered this wall so that anyone can jump up here and i believe that would even include heavies so that might be something new that you need to deal with is like a pyro or a heavy on top of this fence that could be kind of annoying i could see that being a problem um, so just something to be aware of. Alright, um, so now why don't we, why don't we flip it around? We'll talk about holding last. Um, very important, again, vision. People like to, you know, uber through alley and dungeon a lot. Left is generally less common, but you have some pretty good sight lines. If you can get it, having a player here for vision is is very good. It's kind of the equivalent of the god spot, uh, but from a last hold perspective. So if you can have someone here just early, spotting where their combo is moving, this is money. Because you can see them going towards dungeon, you can see them crossing alley right there, and you can see them, you know, if they're coming towards lobby. So this is a really great spot if you can get someone here early. Ideally a soldier, so that he can, you know, jump out. You know, he can go to the window, he can jump out, whatever. So if you can get someone right here, that's a lot of info, very valuable. Um, you can get a little bit of info from Ali, but obviously you're not going to be seeing the other doors. So um, if at all possible, you want to get that info left side. All right. Um, let's see, what else is going on here? I think this could be a really strong last for running like Pyro and Sentry. Just because, I don't know, the Sentry... Is probably mostly going to be near the spawn. And your pyro could do a decent job of just playing the spawn door and then reflecting it. And living. Not a lot of people use that, but I think it could be pretty strong. You probably wouldn't want an aggressive pyro on this because the last is too big. And you can't easily rotate between the doors. But a passive pyro I think could be actually really good on this. And in some cases it might almost feel mandatory because getting out of this spawn is very hard. I feel like a pyro will help you so much to get out of the spawn if you do have to rotate back. But best practices on last are always going to be, you know, your soldiers try not to go in spawn. So you may want soldiers getting used to, you know, rotating quickly, trying to just lurk, you know, in corners like this to wait out an uber, you know, waiting here to watch the uber go in. 
waiting here, you know, things like that. Anything you can do to have your soldier not be in spawn so that he can be ready to counter jump the point, it's pretty good. Um, as mentioned, you know, sniper's decent on this last. If you are, uh, you know, in a stalemate, I think a sniper, like, trying to control top left here would be obnoxious. Kind of similar to snake water, where that sniper pushes up on the far right side of snake water last on defense, and you just, like, make lobby almost unplayable. I think a sniper can do a very similar thing here. So if you're in a stalemate, you may want to set that up. Um, otherwise, I mean, some of these sniper sight lanes are decent, but yeah, again, it, it's all about that left side in terms of sight lanes, in my opinion. All right. Pushing out of last. Let's see. Um, Alley is usually the go-to for people just because it's, you know, it's got nice uh open air for people to jump through it's very hard for them to spam it like directly and you know you got a decent health pack here etc so usually pe people will try to push alley it's the furthest option away as well um compared to some of these where it's just like you have one small doorway and you're you're just forced to all funnel through that and then you're just in and fighting whereas alley allows you to kind of peek and poke a little bit more so a lot of teams are going to push out through alley and just always be aware that if you're overstacking alley, you know, you got to make sure someone's covering the flank because I suspect people are going to be waiting here often to try to wrap and back cap because they can be right up in this corner on this shutter. The moment you, you know, commit through alley, boom, they're just booking it to last and you may even see combos doing this. So this is something to be very cautious about. It may even be worth having your demo man play this similar to gully wash where you're trapping this, uh, you're trapping up this lobby while your team is pushing the other side um, until you're like sure that, uh, you know, they're all in front or they're all leaving. That being said, like I mentioned earlier, this can be a really good uh, map to just pop Ubers and just bomb deep. So you may just want to pop on your demo and have them just bomb here and just make sure your flank is like ready. Like your soldiers should be here like prime to rocket this with a scout ready with them or even like double soldier in here you know ready to just nuke anyone who comes close as always got to keep your eyes out for high bombs because the same high bombs that they'll uh you know use to force you they can they can use here when you're trying to push out a last so high bombs around these corners are are deadly you could see a soldier like sitting here goes for a high bomb around this corner and he's like literally in the skybox just sinking rockets down on you or from like uh, that angle over there or off of this angle or you know around this corner so high bombs are going to be a huge threat here so your scout and your team they're just going to need to be looking up a lot your demo may even want to you know put some stickies up there for soldiers to jump into if you can do it a very threatening uber you could take out of last could be to just run your uber like right up here and kind of you know intimidate them out i think there are options for that here similarly at like shutter you can do kind of like a wrap uber of sorts where you're trying to like cut off exits so you could come through shutter you know this would be a very like bold uber to take but you just like try to catch them if they're like playing on the point you could cut them off right here things like that are viable so i'd say almost every route here is viable to push out of and uber out of you just got to be very aware of like the flanks because people will try to wrap a lot on this map and yeah, this is probably an alley that you don't want to, you don't want to linger in. Like if you're sitting around here, getting spammed on this low ground, just in this pit, you are probably losing. So this is not, this is kind of a no man's land. This section here is a bit of a no man's land. If you're down here, um, you better have a good reason. Otherwise you want people on these high ground spots or just like committing through, not sitting around getting spammed on the low ground. All right. Um... Let's see, what's next? Let's say you're defending second. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, you're probably going to play a lot on the point. You know, it's just the optimal high ground. You have good vision, especially through here. See where they're going. Um, you can even hop up here to be ready to, you know, spam, deny people. As a scout, you're probably going to get forced off of, like, that front fence very quickly. So you're going to be more forced to use this little fence or this little grass ledge here. This is probably the safest spot to be if you're trying to like stay mid-range and on height as a scout 
Um, if you're just going to be very passive, like ready to intercept those high bombs, you could be back here. But you just want to be careful about giving up too much space. I think your medic, rather than backing up into alley or backing up into lobby, probably wants to look to retreat a lot into this elbow. I think that this elbow is kind of the the sweet spot between uh, safe and like not isolated. Obviously, if a soldier gets in here and he like juggles you up, yeah, you're gonna get forced. But using this choke point to kind of funnel them through here is gonna be uh, probably your best bet to survive against a high bomb because he just he can't hit you from the sky. He has to land. So what you can do is you can maybe have a soldier or something kind of patrolling on the point. Ready to hit anyone here, but also ready to hit anyone who lands here. And, you know, maybe he just sits here, sees the soldier come in, and then he's just basically a sentinel in this doorway. No one can get through. And that'll help your medic not get forced as easily. Um, yeah, as mentioned, though, you really don't want to have people start retreating back here. Once people are back here, you kind of lost. Because you're just giving up way too much space. So if you feel like they're starting to take too much space here, don't be too afraid to take an exchange. Because if you exchange like right around this corner, like pop in aggressively, you're really limiting the amount of space that they're taking off that. Like they're they're kind of stuck down here. They're not really getting much. So this is a really good point, in my opinion, for a uh, potentially a proactive exchange into a team that's like trying to dry push a choke. Um, and unlike a map like snake water where you take that exchange and then you end in no man's land on this one If you take that exchange, you're you're still like super close to good positioning. So I think that that's an underrated strat on this map um, Let's see what else is going on here You know be careful not to overextend and be too isolated I think that people get a little greedy sometimes poking in here but as mentioned, this is a good playmaking spot, so if your team can do it, they should. Um, always be wor uh, wary of, like, wraps. That's just this whole map. I feel like there's a lot of back cap potential. And since it's fairly big, uh, it's hard to cover everything and rotate super fast. Um, as mentioned earlier, it kind of goes both ways. Frog is a little bit of a, a death trap. Um, probably better favors the, the team pushing into mid, though, now. Because this health pack is right here. This door is fairly wide. And the nice thing about this angle is that you can get in and you can kind of dance around. So Frog is actually a, a great spot to get into mid if you're just trying to distract or pull eyes. Um, because you can you can live there for a long time. Whereas if you come through this door, you're going to be like fighting people head on. Not likely that that's going to be the case over here. You can peek a little bit. Um, you can get a pack. You know, you can draw eyes away from the major chokes that your team is going to want to get in from. So this is a great option for just kind of distracting and poking into mid. Much more favorable. I would say that this version of the map, pushing mid has become significantly easier. So that's a nice thing. Um, and it's it's kind of kind of justified. I think pushing mid is usually one of the hardest things to do on a lot of maps. So, you know, it's hard to hold, but... In the end, making mid easier to push is probably for the best. Uh, what else? Uh, you can have some pretty good ubers into mid if you just come through choke and just immediately kind of beeline over to the right. And just start trying to cut off people's exits and just go deep. Because if they play passive like this on mid, their vision of choke isn't that good. You know, especially if they have people like sitting back here or on this ledge. This ledge, by the way... Um, you gotta be careful about high bombs, you know, as always when you're approaching through a choke, you just need to force people off of height, the shed, that ledge, etc. But um, there there are now a lot more aggressive options on this map, which I like in terms of Ubers, because you can abuse these like these sight lines. You know? Any any route where you can break a sight line and kind of sneak up on someone is good for a aggressive Uber. So that's where, you know, a high risk area like frog might be really good on massive Uber ad. Because if you can get this deep before popping, and then you just pop right in their face, you're gonna you're gonna uh, massacre the enemy team. But if you're trying to like dry push and like walk your way through here without popping, yeah, that's not gonna go too well. So 
This map does reward teams that are decisive and take fast Ubers because you can break sight lines and kind of catch people out. Um, but it can also re reward teams that are, you know, a bit slower and methodical because there's there's some open space in most of the map where you can kind of just like, you know, do footsies and fight over height and spam and stuff. So it it's viable for different play styles and that's one of the things I like about this map. Uh, oh, this is important. The the Ford spawns. Uh, b just be very aware of the Ford spawn from the team owning middle. If they get a spawn wave and a guy can be in here, uh, this is a very deadly spawn. Because a sniper in here can hit the entire point, or a guy just lurking in here can be coming out and shooting you in the back if you're like set up on this point and preparing to push last. So this spawn, very deadly. It's similar to Snake Water um, or Gully Wash second. This spawn used to be much more deadly for snipers. Now, you can't see too much. It's very easy to avoid. Um, but this is something to consider. Is if they get a spawn timing where they can have a sniper, you probably don't want to, you know, just walk up through here. Because this is really the only thing the sniper can see. So if you if you sense that they may get a spawn timing for a sniper, you may want to just move away towards the right before taking the point. You know, similar to on process where you might go through IT to avoid a sniper in the forwards. Uh, you may want to go through choke or frog when pushing mid in order to avoid a sniper. But that being said, it's not too hard to bomb out the sniper. He is on low ground, and you know if you just set up like a decent high bomb, you can sink rockets onto that doorway and just insta give him. So, that's not much of a problem. Um, and I think that's that's more or less it, you know. It's it's a map that uh if your if your soldiers are good at high bombing but also not feeders, you can do a lot because they can just always be in the skybox. And it's a map where if you're good at dry pushing and like poking and stuff, there are a lot of options for that where people can kind of bust through and start, you know, fighting for space and it's also a map where if you have good reads and can you know keep up the momentum you can surprise people with ubers very aggressively so it makes it a very dynamic map and uh i like it a lot so yeah hopefully that overview helped you guys and uh good luck on sultry in the uh the coming season so quick addendum I did forget about a couple, like, sneaky things. One of them is this underneath section on mid. This is a really good spot for a scout to just sneak through here and just appear in the enemy team's face. If you can pull that off on scout, obviously it's it's high risk, high reward, but you can basically teleport <laughs> uh, as far as the enemy team is aware because you're just up this slope and uh, around that corner super fast. So that can be a really good uh, area for an aggressive scout play. Um, some people may lurk down here if they're uh, looking for like a force. Like for example, a soldier might hide down here, bait you guys into middle, and then bomb. You know, things like that. Similar to Gully Wash. So it is something to be aware of down here. But you probably aren't going to want your combo or anything down here. This mid is going to be a lot about high ground control. And this is more of a high risk kind of thing. You can really kind of rat your way around this, this mid if you want to be that kind of player. Like just scurrying around down here. And just hugging these corners and just appearing in front of the enemy team's face, like behind them. Uh, there are definitely uh, options for that. And then uh, an additional sneaky spot that I forgot to mention was uh, up here in the ceiling. There is a ledge there. Uh, I missed it because uh, I'm trying to bash or jump. This is normally going to be a, um, a soldier position. But this is something to be aware of. Is There is a hiding spot up here. So anytime you're going through cheese, you may just want to clear that. And then um, in lobby, there's also a hiding spot on this plank. You know, if you're pushing out, you want to be careful uh, to clear this because someone could be hiding there, theoretically. I've seen medics actually hide here. It's technically a fairly safe spot, but if a guy comes through here and just shoots you once, you're going to get forced. So I wouldn't advise that spot too much. Um, yeah, there used to be a good hiding spot right here, but... Maybe if you're, like, tucked and turned and looking into the corner, you could get away with it. Maybe 
like here you could hide. I actually hid here in a match and won a round off it, I think. In uh, my playoff match. I just sat here. Their team all just... They literally all pushed Alley, and I just let them walk past me. And then, boom, I went for the back cap. So, yeah, you gotta be you gotta be somewhat mindful of hiding spots and corners and stuff. Because um, there are a few on this map that people will use. I think you can hover above this. So this is kind of a silly one. <laughs> I'm sure people will come up with other ones. Um, but yeah, I figure those are those are worth addressing as well. And that's about it. Hey guys, hope that was helpful and hope you enjoyed it. I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters as always. Special shout out to John, who's a level 4 supporter, who I've been working closely with to help him and his team improve. Head over to patreon.com slash banny if you want to support or get early access to my videos and all that good stuff. All right, see you in the next one. Peace.